Hello, my name is Jake Daly, and I'm standing in the historic Protestant Chapel located on the campus of the nationally historic Dayton, Ohio Veterans Affairs Medical Center. Originally named the National Asylum for Disabled Volunteer Soldiers, it was established in 1868, and construction on this chapel began in the same year. Originally a multi-denominational house of worship, it was formally dedicated on October the 26th, 1870. It is the first permanent church built by the U.S. government with the help of disabled volunteer soldiers. The bell and bell tower were added in 1876. This bell is known as the Centennial Bell. It is inscribed, made for the church of the National Soldiers' Home, Dayton, Ohio, from cannon captured from the enemy during the War of the Rebellion. This church also houses the very first electric organ in Montgomery County. This chapel has been refurbished and upgraded, and it was rededicated May the 3rd, 2012. The Dayton Affairs, Dayton Veterans Affairs Medical Center has 144 very interesting years of national history. As past Disabled American Veterans District 2 Commander, I would like to present the, the DAV National Message for Memorial Day 2012. It is entitled, Fallen, Never Forgotten. It is an honor to be with you today with fellow Americans who share my respect for the men and women who risked their all in defense of this great nation. Today, of all days, I hope the American people can put aside their personal strife and take time to remember those who are too often out of sight, out of mind. Our brave military members who have put service to our sacred homeland before self. Without question, the military is home to a unique breed of men and women whose devotion to a brother or sister in arms is unrivaled and unquestioned. It is because of brave, selfless actions that missions are accomplished, battles are won, and comrades' lives are spared. Many of the people who let Memorial Day pass by without a second thought may very well owe their existence to the courageous sacrifices of a sailor, soldier, airman, marine, or coast guard member. Here at home or on foreign soil, today or in some bygone time. I would like to share with you now a few accounts of such bravery and valor. Sergeant First Class Paul Smith, while under enemy fire in Iraq, organized the evacuation of three soldiers wounded in an attack on their vehicle. Sergeant Smith manned the machine gun mounted on their vehicle, maintaining an exposed position as he engaged the enemy forces, allowing the safe withdrawal of the wounded soldiers. He was mortally wounded in the attack, but not before he had eliminated as many as 50 enemy fighters to save his injured comrades. Certainly, every loss of life is tragic especially when it is a life prematurely ended in the heat of combat. I hope on this Memorial Day, the American people can direct their attention in remembrance of our nation's heroic defenders whose lives were cut tragically short. May their memories be cherished and their sacrifices noted and appreciated by the country they protected. I would like to tell you about a friend of mine and a co-worker here at the Dayton VA, Dennis Thatcher. Dennis is a Vietnam War veteran and was awarded our nation's third highest award for combat, Valor, out of that war. His Silver Star citation reads as follows. 
for gallantry in action while engaged in military operations involving conflict with an armed hostile force in the Republic of Vietnam. Sergeant Thatcher distinguished himself by exceptional meritorious achievement on 23 and 24 June 1971, while under continuous enemy attack at Fire Support Base Fuller. On 23 June 1971, Fire Support Base Fuller came under heavy enemy attack, size of the enemy force estimated to be regimental force plus. The enemy attacked the northeastern side of the hill, inflicting casualties on friendly forces. During the heavy ground attack, Sergeant Thatcher located himself on top of the highest bunker on the north side of the hill, so he could accurately direct gunships on the advancing enemy. Even though the enemy continued to advance, firing B-40 rockets, 52mm recoilless rifles, and 51 caliber machine guns all around his highly vulnerable position, Sergeant Thatcher refused to leave until the enemy was surpassed. After approximately four hours of adjusting continuous gunships and airstrikes, the enemy was finally halted. The enemy assaulted the hill approximately five times during the daylight hours. Each time, Sergeant Thatcher occupied his position on the bunker, directing devastative, devastating suppressive fires on the enemy. At approximately 2100 hours that night, the enemy mounted another attack using 120 millimeter rockets, 82 millimeter mortars, and 120 millimeter rockets as covering fire for the advancing enemy troops. Even though the enemy was directing this indirect fire on the northern portion of the hill, Sergeant Thatcher took up his exposed position on the bunker using a flashlight to direct gunships. His light fired gunships firing on the advancing enemy. Sergeant Thatcher continued to finish his, furnish, to flash his light even though the enemy was trying to eliminate his position. Without his direction, the enemy could not have been suppressed. During the next day, Sergeant Thatcher continued to assist the friendly forces as much as possible, moving from fighting position to fighting position, resupplying the Arvin soldiers with water, ammunition, and food, each time exposing himself to enemy fire. At approximately 1,700 hours that day, the enemy once again assaulted the hill inflicting tremendous casualties on the friendly troops. Sergeant Thatcher again directing air support, plus assisting the wounded soldiers. At that time, the decision was made to evacuate the hill due to the heavy enemy contact. Sergeant Thatcher refused to leave until he was sure most of the friendly forces were departing. He continued to aid the wounded and carry radio equipment even though he himself was physically exhausted from lack of sleep. That night, the troops stayed in a field location still under heavy enemy contact and Sergeant Thatcher continued to aid the wounded. The next morning, Sergeant Thatcher, one Marine Sergeant, and eight wounded soldiers walked approximately 3,000 meters of enemy infested jungle to another friendly firebase. During this dangerous walk, Sergeant Thatcher personally carried wounded soldiers to an area where they could be medevaced. Sergeant Thatcher's actions were truly heroic in nature. Without his val valuable assistance, many friendly lives would have been lost. By virtue of his extraordinary heroism in connection with military operations against an opposing force, Sergeant Thatcher contributed immense, immeasurably to the accomplishments of the United States mission in the Republic of Vietnam. His heroism is in keeping with the highest traditions of the military service and reflected great credit upon himself, his unit, and the United States Army. Now, I believe today is also a day we should take special note of one man who may still be in the fight for his life right now. Though days, weeks, and months pass without his name being spoken on the lips of the American people, 
He is nonetheless in my heart and my prayers at this moment. Right now, the Taliban are believed to be holding prisoner Bo Bergdahl, a 25-year-old Army sergeant from Haley, Idaho. He is the only U.S. soldier held by the insurgents at this time. He was taken captive June the 30th, 2009. It was reported this past December that Sergeant Bergdahl had made a daring attempt to escape, but was recaptured. Just imagine, if you will, being held prisoner for years of your life, not knowing when or if you will ever see your loved ones again. Imagine the fear and frustration you would feel with each passing day. And imagine what it must be like to face this struggle alone. Ladies and gentlemen, Sergeant Bergdahl needs your thoughts and your prayers on this Memorial Day and every day until he is returned home to us, his family, his country. Americans, as we know, can be forgetful of the sacrifices made by military members, veterans, and their families. Beyond the many citations for valor are the untold, undocumented stories of men and women who live with the scars of war. Many American sons and daughters are returning with amputations, disfigurements, physical illnesses due to environmental exposures, traumatic brain injuries, and post-traumatic stress disorder, among other ailments. It is nearly impossible for these veterans and their families to forget the sacrifices they made. So why would we allow our own memories to lapse? They did, after all, stand up for every one of us. For many, Memorial Day stirs nostalgic memories of the past and marks the beginning of a more leisurely, carefree summer spirit. As a deeply patriotic American, it warms my heart to address the many of you here today, taking time out of your busy schedule to pay respect to those who have given their lives for this country. This is an uncertain world, and no matter how safe you may feel, our freedom is a highly valued and targeted commodity. Never forget, never let your children forget how fortunate we are to have a voluntary force of men and women willing to safeguard our freedom so we can rest soundly at night. Your attention here today is a testament to an American public grateful for the freedoms and liberties supplied through the heroics of men like Paul Smith, Dennis Thatcher, and Bo Bergdahl. May we, as their loyal countrymen, never abandon their memory or allow their sacrifices to slip from our national conscience. In closing, I would like to read a letter that appeared in the September-October 1997 issue of the DAV National Magazine. It is entitled, A Long Hard Road. It begins, My name is Jennifer, and I'm 14 years old. I live in Pleasanton, California. Though I don't know any of you, I've heard some stories about a few of you. I want you to know that my heart goes out to each and every one of you. You had the courage and guts to stand up for something you believed in, your country. You were willing to give your life for millions of others. You should all be very proud of what you did. Don't listen to what other people say. In my heart, you are all true heroes. When I think of what all of you did, I get goosebumps, and my heart swells with pride. You've traveled a long, hard road, and now it's your turn to rest. So please do so. To me, none of you have died, just changed. 
You are now the angels of the future. So I ask of you, please look over me and take care of me as you did our country. And I know that my life will be the best it could ever be. Thank you for putting your life on the line for people you did not know. You have all earned your wings. POWs and MIAs, you won't be forgotten. I will make sure of that. God bless you, and may your spirit live forever. Thank you.